I'm delighted to be joined by TV presenter and psychologist Emma Kenny. We've got loads of interesting stuff to talk about today. You're encouraging people to change their environment, take time at work with their emails, combine work and play and get in the correct balance. But before we go into your top tips, because I know we've got five really interesting ones here, there's been research conducted. And firstly, I'd like to go through that. So yeah. I know that 42% of people think working at the office actually boosts their career. Yeah, absolutely. So this research has been carried out by GTR and the whole premise behind it is to look at really how working has changed because a lot of people are doing flexible work and they're at home a lot more. A lot of people are doing home working and we're not necessarily thinking about how that can impact on our well-being. And one of the things that I kind of want to have a conversation about with people is the importance of actually going into the office, actually having that experience of the commute and going and spending time with people because you're missing out on some really key foundations of what makes us healthy, happy humans. It's as simple as that. And when we polled people and asked them, one of the reasons that they really feel that going into the office is an important part of their day, or at least their weekly schedule to some degree. They say, well, mainly it's because it makes them feel more confident. It makes them feel as if their development and growth is occurring. But also, I think it's about mentorship. I think it's about because you've got colleagues who you can connect with, talk to, delegate to, ask for help and support from, you just have a more rounded experience. And in research, and there's a lot of it, it takes about eight interactions every single day with people who we don't necessarily know really well, but we just have those micro interactions, those water cooler conversations over a coffee with a colleague. They actually really do help us stay healthy and they lower stress. And we're not getting that when we just sat at our kitchen table. And I can own that because I work a lot from home and I really make an effort to go out to other places now to do work so that I've got that balance. It's interesting because from personal perspective, I was still at university while the pandemic was going on and transitioning to doing all the work at home was quite difficult. And then yeah. initially when I started working, it was all online. And then when I started at Bauer, I was back in an office environment with loads of people. And I don't think I realised what a big difference it was. And I'm not sure everybody's realising that there is such no. a big difference between working at home and working alongside other people. I think you're absolutely right. I think one of the incredible things about human beings, we give ourselves a bad rap sometimes, but actually we're really adaptable. So when you present us with a set of situations, we tend to agree to ourselves, this is how it's going to be. I'm going to adapt to this. And it's a way of psychologically managing the situation. But that creates a habit. And then you get into a habit and you think, well, this must be how it's going to be from now on. But what we need to try to do is, as you just noted, break that cycle and say to ourselves, listen, it's brilliant having flex time, particularly for women. If you can be at home some of the time, that is brilliant. But at the same time, try to intersperse that with two days in the office a week because of what you talked about then. It's getting to know your colleagues, it's forming relationships, it's actually working less. And I don't mean that in an unproductive way. I mean that when you're in work, you'll get up and have a conversation with someone. You won't answer your emails 24 seven. You will acknowledge that there is a break between home and work. So even the commute themselves, you know, this has obviously been done because they really want to encourage people to realize that you can use a commute to actually benefit your mental health. And we don't have a lot of you time these days. We don't have a lot of time where you can just sit, disconnect from your world and concentrate on your needs. And I think that we're in a position where we can use every bit of time for a pocket of possibility. And certainly for me, getting people back on the trains and going on that commute and connecting with other people and spending time with their friends in the office and going out for a drink after work, they're the very big stalwarts of happiness. And we have lost that. And I think that, as you said, we normalize it because we just get used to it. But that doesn't mean it's not having the impact on our stress levels. And that's a big issue because what we want is less stressed, more happy and confident workers. And I don't think you can get that when you're just at home doing things by yourself because of what you talked about, not having those interactions. You touched on the commute there and, and now so many people, 17% actually, according to the research, are using it as an opportunity to improve their well-being with some even using meditation apps. Absolutely. So that's one of the really nice things about this particular bit of research, because obviously the premise of it as well is to talk about the fact that they've introduced reward systems so that you can actually do things that are helpful for you whilst you're on your commute. So, for example, you can get mindfulness apps that are reduced price or free. You can get free drinks. You can do all of these things that make the commute seem a little bit more rewarding, as in physically rewarding, where you can feel and sense and experience the reward of something amazing. And I think that the more we can get those little kind of nudges which are saying to people okay if your perception of the commute is 
the time and space that I get to just switch off, the time I get to decompress from my life and then work life, and on the tight way home, the time I get to ingest and think and reflect on what's gone on and just kind of switch off to that and allow myself to decompress before I get home. That's something that's really, really good for us. And again, I travel a lot to London. And because of that, when I'm doing that, I take a book, I listen to my meditation streams, I listen to podcasts, because you know, there are so many incredibly educational, interesting, funny podcasts. There are all these things that when you manage your time well in that respect, it kind of means that you have a time off the world and just a time for you. And certainly this reward scheme is all about trying to key people into that. And I think that's an excellent way of motivating people to feel that they are benefiting in every single way by returning to the office. Like I said, a few days a week. If it's not going to work for you full time, that's fine. But make sure that some visibility, make sure that your development's being dealt with, make sure your growth is being taken care of. That's far easier when you're seeing people that you work with on a regular basis. Now, looking over to your top tips, we've talked about it already, but the importance of that commute to work, it's an opportunity to set yourself up almost like a boxer doing his ring walk or a footballer walking down the tunnel. It's a massive opportunity. And secondly, if you are working from home, there's an opportunity where you can get out of the house, you can go to a cafe or you can go to a nice area where there is nice views to look at and put yourself in a nicer environment. That's exactly what I do. So that's one of the things that I have to do in my work life because I do work with my brother and we don't have an office anymore. And so we will go and we'll sit in a particular cafe and we'll spend time together and with other people because it means that we get a break from our normal experience at home. And we also get to spend time around the people that are in that particular cafe. And that just breaks the day up. But also you should schedule, if you are a home worker, you should schedule. You should schedule getting out. You should schedule walking. You should schedule going and having some food somewhere occasionally so you can just break that up and you should schedule meeting people that will mean that your dinner hour isn't sat in front of your computer all of those things are really important to well-being if it comes down to like how do I make my time in the commute an effective way of spending it well do look at the rewards look at what you can get for free look at what you can get for a discounted rate and then use that to your advantage so that those hours that you're taking are hours of productivity and positivity and when you arrive at the office first you've got something to talk about and secondly you feel like you've inspired yourself a little bit and I think the last few years have been a real moment for me to say how much time do we devote to our health and happiness you know we've not really ever had a pause where we've thought to ourselves wow we don't necessarily think about this a great deal and so for me coming out of all of those issues it's really led to that mindset of thinking okay how do I insert opportunities to really concentrate on what makes me healthy and happy and knowing the ingredients list of that pen portrait of possibility within happiness that's where you have empowerment so I think that right now even though people may have got into that scenario where they're used to wearing the pajamas because they don't have to be seen beneath their waist Think about actually getting yourselves into a situation where you're a contender, dressing up for your job and making yourself remind yourself that actually you've done a really good job getting to this position, that actually you are somebody who's confident. And then if you don't have the opportunity to go into the office that often, still make time and space. If you don't have an office, make time and space to meet colleagues in other places. You can still build all of those relationships outside of your home. And by doing that, you just create those building blocks of happiness and well-being. And I think more than ever, if we can control and embrace some of those elements the only thing we're going to get is a huge benefit it's interesting you touched on the psychological journey there because I don't think people take into account all the time how far they have come throughout their lives it's sort of yeah. we're on this process and we forget almost it's so true that's a really good way of looking at it very often we just accept what's happened and we sometimes think it's by chance we don't always think it's by design or if we haven't quite reached where we want we don't necessarily value where we are but actually most of us if you look back at your life and what you've done and where you are and how you've achieved and you just take a moment to give yourself a pat on the back and also to have that sense of agency which is what I did arrive here and that means I can arrive there if there's a different plan or goal and aspiration and again I think that's why being around other people is really important important because just conversations change the way you think and feel it's as simple as that you go into the office you meet an amazingly charismatic interesting colleague they remind you of how great you are at what you do and then all of a sudden you're fired up and thinking well maybe I can do more maybe there's a different journey that I can go on and those little connections they can be incredibly amplified in our success because of the fact that we've made them so the psychological journey and I think we often underestimate that where work is concerned is a really powerful tool that we can harness or of course that we can use in a terrible direction we want to avoid that which is 
why it's so integral to just think about how you can build these positives into your work day. Interestingly, you talk about conversations there. Yeah. In, often we're advised not to connect too much with TV personalities, actors, etc. But podcasts are a little bit different, aren't they? Because yes. it's a candid conversation. And because they're in our ears constantly and the going on our journey to work with us it's almost like we know them it is I think that you get such an experience of a completely different paradigm of personality I think that it feels a little bit like shall we say a connection when you use Twitter and you feel like you're directly connecting with somebody you don't get anything that's really in depth there but you still get that oh this person and I can relate they might not respond but they can relate to what I'm saying or we've got a similar belief system podcasts kind of amplify that on steroids so to speak they make you feel that you really are engaged that you really know this person you know their story you see different elements of them and I think we are really obsessed with journeys and it's an interesting one that I'm doing this today because journeys is something that I talk about constantly because of my own therapeutic work and also because that's what you're going on with clients and here I am talking about trains and journeys and the commute but actually it's a symbolism that's exactly what journeys are. They're about opportunities to experience different things, different people, different stories. So podcasts definitely symbolise and are synergetic with that, just as what I'm talking about regarding the communities is a nice marriage between those two. Suppose it's the same with autobiographies, because obviously they all follow that journey. Oh, well, I mean, there's a lot of things about autobiographies right now, isn't there? Yeah, there is. With, uh, we, them. We've been covering that a lot with the, the whole Prince Harry thing, and I suppose that's an interesting story in and of itself. But another thing that you talk about is those after-work drinks, those yes. dinners with friends, and I suppose you've mentioned it a while, but that talking to colleagues while you're making those cups of teas and things. But from those out-of-work experiences, you're with these people every single day. So you need to build those friendships and you need to be comfortable around them. You really do. But also, if you don't have those connections, if you don't spend time building those connections, the reality is that you feel a little bit excluded. So if you don't have them and those alliances, it can make work feel a little bit isolating. Whereas if you cultivate and cater and really put your energy into it, the results are you get better friendships, you get better development, you get better support. And in the end, hopefully you get long-term relationships that can be really, really healthy and happy for you. And like I said, personally, I think we need to do more to remember the importance of human connection. I think it's definitely in keeping and in line with happiness and with contentment. And when we haven't got it, we see a drop in those kind of attributes. We really do. And the last one of your top tips is asking for feedback in the office, because these online meetings that we have are so daunting that it's easier just to ask and get it out of the way. Absolutely. You should always ask for what you need. You should never feel scared to say what is required. Somebody can always say no. But also in psychology, there's a really interesting piece of research. Well, there's lots of research around this, but it says that if you ask for help, the person who you ask will like you more. Because for some reason, we have this bias that says, well, if they've asked me for help, it must be that I like them, that I'm helping them. So you build these lovely bonds whilst also getting the best out of those colleagues. So you should always ask for what you want. Like I said, if people can't help you, that's fine. They can say no. But the more risks you take, the more rewards you get. It's as simple as that. And I think rewards are everything in life. They're the little reinforcements. I mean, that's one of the reasons I'm talking about that today because of the reward system that's now on the Govia Times link. The whole premise of it is that you can get these little rewards that will make the commute even nicer and feel more validating so I think realistically if you can synergize all of that getting something nice for yourself spending time for yourself and also getting the benefits of being around people that you hopefully will build great bonds with that's a recipe for happiness at work and work is such a fundamental part of our life it's a huge part of our life and anything that makes it feel less stressful more connected more fun that's a great thing it really is now, having explained all those tips, I imagine our listeners will hopefully take them on board and therefore <laughs> be able to improve their work day. But moving on now, there's the Next Level Reward Scheme and yeah. they're offering loads of things, coffee, cinema tickets, all sorts, even holidays. So would you be able yeah, to I'm talk me through that? I'm obsessed with the coffee. The coffee is the thing that gets me. All people ever have to do is offer me a reward card for coffee and I'm there every single day of the week. It's as simple as that. So customers basically earn three points per every single pound that they spend and therefore they can build up those. And as you said, they can then use that to essentially cash in these rewards. And I guess that what you have to do there is think carefully about your own needs. Like, are you like me? 
please can they immediately mainline caffeine directly to my veins. That's the thing that I, if you give me a free coffee, I just feel that sense of fulfillment. It's a working class background. I really, I'm very Northern as well. And at the end of the day, therefore, I kind of love that. But if you're somebody who's just into health and fitness, you know, you can get opportunities to go to gyms, you can get sessions, you can get all of these different things leisure wise. So I think that that's about taking some personal responsibility as well. It's about thinking, well, how can I use this to benefit me? And you know, it's interesting that some people will collect points and then not necessarily do very much with them. And again, that's right. Let's take some personal accountability and responsibility for your well-being. What do you need? What do you want? How can this benefit your life? So I think that anybody who gets involved in this and uses this Think carefully about how to strategize, because I think up to the last few years, like I said, it's been a lot of difficult experiences and a lot of us are still decompressing and figuring things out and wondering what's happening next. And our lives have changed dramatically. And it's like, OK, so what do I start doing to focus on me and how I shift the way that I feel in a positive direction? And how do I utilize what we're being told about the foundations of happiness and the opportunities and rewards that are out there that can give me that foundation that we're talking about today and use that to my best best opportunity and I think that that's all about saying what do I need and accepting that you're entitled to that it's interesting that you mentioned that actually because the other day at work they offered us free fish and chips and I think everybody in the entire <laughs> office felt incredibly motivated over this idea of free curry sauce it, it's great it only costs a few quid but for some reason absolutely it feels amazing well it says I value you listen I think that that's really important GTR doing this at a time where there's been quite a chaotic life in the past few years, it's about saying, listen, we value you. We want to encourage you to get back into the office. And we want to encourage you to understand that the time that you spend on the commute can actually be something really positive. And we're going to give you something that makes you feel benefited. And I think that everybody who wants to encourage that brand loyalty and that sense of these people care not just about the numbers of people but the people that are actually those numbers and I think that's a really powerful message to give so absolutely I think giving people free things to remind them that they have meaning and they matter can make it feel so much more personal and I love that well, thank you for joining me, Emma. It's deeply appreciated. You've certainly thank you for enlightened me. me. No, you're very welcome. I'm sure you've enlightened the listeners as well as myself. But before I let you go, is there anything that you'd like to add that you feel I haven't mentioned? The most important thing I would say is, like I noted, we've got into some really big habits. And part of that is we convince ourselves that the way we're living is the right way because we've got used to it. And I think a time of reflection would be helpful a little bit because if you were working in an office and now you're constantly remote, but you do have the option to go in, but you've kind of got into that habit of thinking, oh, I don't really don't care. I don't want to go in. That is actually a bit of a lethargy. And it's not because you're not doing anything wrong or right. It's just that you've got into that idea of, oh, well, I can't really be bothered because this is my habit. What I'd say is energy wise and feedback wise, even if it's just one day a week or two days a week, going in doesn't even have to be for the full day. I promise you, give it six weeks and you will genuinely think, what's changed? Why does my mood feel different? Why do I feel a little bit lighter? That will be the impact of going there. Or as you said earlier on, if you are a full time home worker and some people haven't got offices at all, do what you said get yourself out to a cafe, sit yourself down for a few hours, get to know the staff, because those little interactions, they genuinely are an antidote to things like stress, and you want to employ as many of those in your life.